Shalom, shalom, and greetings from Teshua community. I'm Ima Rafael, and I've been gone for a minute, but I'm back today with a tough word for the daughters of Zion. And our word for today is care, caring. And we, the people of Yah, must truly learn how to care for each other. Today, I'm struggling just a little bit with my voice, but I know that Yahshua HaMashiach is my strength. So we're gonna go by Imuna as I bring forth a word for the daughters of Tezion. And remember, my scriptures always come from my ish, Rayak Dawi. But before I begin to expound on this truth that Yah has placed in my heart, I would like for our young people to have a scripture for you and a song. So now we'll hear from our young ones. Hallelujah, way. Of this truth. Y'all didn't tell me that I was sweet 
and I was doing okay, he showed me how vile and corrupt I was, how vile my thoughts were. When you don't walk in righteousness, then you're vile. You are an enemy against Almighty Yah. So as he showed me those things, it was my ish to start walking in truth first. And Ken, he didn't tell me that he was walking in truth. I saw the change. No, it didn't take him a month to, I just saw a change overnight. And when I saw what Yah had done for him, I wanted the very same thing. Because I knew within myself that I was destined for hell. Notice when you practice, practice wickedness, when your thoughts, it, the least little thing makes you angry, you're up, you're down, you can't be at shalom with no one, then yet you know within yourself that you are an enemy against Yahshua HaMashiach. Because Yahshua is not that way. Can I tell you how you know that? He, as I see the sun rising, and I see the brightness of it, so does that evil, wicked do. When it rains, it doesn't just rain on me. It just, just doesn't rain on my garden. But it rains on that woman that is vile and evil. It rains on her garden too. So as Yah shows me favor, he will show you favor too. But we must learn to walk in this truth. So as we learn, the people of Yah learn to truly care for the body, then we're truly walking in truth. But the word care, what does it really mean? Care, the provision of what is necessary for the health, for the welfare, the maintenance, and the protection of the nation of Yahweh's elect. It looks after, provides for the needs of each other. Serious attention, consideration for one another. Care is protection. And as I have walked this road doors, Yah has kept me from so many vile and evil things. I told Yah for that. And I noticed the hand of Yah. It's not the hand of man. It's not my kinsmen looking after me. But it's the hand of Almighty Yahweh that has kept me. Hallelujah. So I want to start in Psalms 142, verse 1, where Dawid, he cries out to Almighty Yah. Because he know he can't go to his mother, he can't go to his father, he can't go to his friends and his buddies. He must cry out to Almighty Yah for his deliverance. And daughters, can I tell you, once you understand that you're only going to be delivered by the hand of Almighty Yah, through your sure, he's the only one that can deliver you. Your friends can give you counsel all day long. But if your trust is not in Yahshua HaMashiach, you will never be delivered. Hallelujah. So let us start with Tehillim Psalms 142, verse 1. It says, Dawid said, I cried to Yahweh with my voice. With my voice to Yahweh did I make my supplication known unto him. When was the last time that you got on your knees and you truly were broken. You cried out. You let nothing hinder you. You didn't even remember your breakfast, your lunch, or your dinner. You were on your face unto Almighty Yah for true deliverance. Because you know he was the only one that can deliver you. So that we poured out his supplications unto Almighty Yah. Because he was troubled. And he knew the only way he was going to be made free is by crying out. And that's what he did. He wasn't looking for his friends to deliver him, but he cried out unto Almighty Yah. To Helium Psalms 142, verse 3. He says, When my Ruah, my spirit, was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my pathway. Yah knows your pathway. When you rise in the morning, He already knows what your day is. You don't have to plan anything because the plan is already set. And when you trust and lean on Almighty Yahweh, He is your deliverance. He said, the way we're in, I walked. Have they secretly laid a trap for me? Can I tell you, daughters, the only trap that is within you is what's in your mind. Your thoughts, your thinking. When you think righteously, 
the path is already straight and narrow. You stay on that path. You don't turn to the left nor to the right. You stay on that straight and narrow path. You say, well, it gets kind of tight. That's how y'all wants it. He wants it tight and snug that you can't turn. He wants you to stay in the straight and narrow path, lean and depend on him. When everything else fails, just trust in your shooter. He said, I look on the right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, no man cared. Yes, that we knew that. No one can care for you like Yahshua, Hamashiach. You say, well, how will I know that, man? If you hear the message when he teaches and instructs you in righteousness, then you will know that Yahshua truly cares for you. Yahshua HaMashiach. Yah has sent him to deliver man, woman, and child out of all of the anguish and all the trials. There are trials that we must go through through to prove if we really love Yahshua HaMashiach. The care of Yahweh, we must have the same care that produced love one for another. So when you truly know that Almighty Yah cares for you, you must care for the body like Yahshua cares for us. Through many trials and tribulations, if you just learn to lean and depend on Yahshua, there's nothing that you can't overcome. In your sickness, daughters, hardships in your home, just stand still and see the Yah Shack of Almighty Yah. When you walk before Yah with a pure land, He will protect you. He will keep you from every evil. There are trials that you must go through, but He will not let evil overtake you. That we knew that Yahweh cared for him. That's why he cried out to me. Let us in our everyday walk before Yah examine our own land, examine our own being, learn to cry out, for he is our help in time of need. Hallelujah. So I want to go to 1st Kephah, chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your cares upon your Shua. Hamashiach, for he truly does care for you. In my experience, daughters, I've been walking this way 40 plus years, and not one time can I say, when I truly keep on that straight and narrow path, Yah has led me down this path of righteousness. If I let my lust overcome me, then I will go to the left or to the right. But when I truly endure the hardship and cry out unto Almighty Yah. He always delivered. He's always on time. Hallelujah. The greatest of cares, a reminder of life, cares will always cover each other. And we as the body of Yahshua HaMashiach, we must genuinely learn truly how to care for each other. So if this sister has a lack can I tell you, if you truly care, there will be no lack. When you truly care, when there's anything going on in the body, you'll be able to assist. That's what care is. It's a genuine love, one for another. So if my sister, when she's hurting, I know how to, I, I feel that hurt. I feel that pain. And can I tell you, there will be words that I can comfort her through Yahshua. Hamashiach. I want to go to the book of wisdom, chapter 5. I'm going to read 5 through 16. It says, Even so, we in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end. Death already works in the body and had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. We are consuming our own wickedness every day. We must let the righteousness of Almighty Yahweh govern our thoughts, our being, our actions, our deeds. You can't say, I don't know how to treat that a whole kid. I don't know how to treat that sister. Yes, you do. You do right by her. You show a kind word. You greet the sister every day. 
You're excited she's alive. She's, in the, she's striving just like you're striving every day. You can't be up and down and stuff. You must practice righteousness, daughters, every day. You must be consistent in your walk every day. In this walk, in this understanding of truth, we must learn to be disciplined daughters. You can't say, well, I don't know how I got over. Well, I know how I got over through the Dhamma Yoshua HaMashiach. I let it purge me of my evil thoughts, my evil ways, because in this flesh dwelleth no tough thing. Nothing is tough about this flesh. It will do evil every day if you don't govern it. Hallelujah. For the tikva of the unrighteous is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin fork that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is despair here and there with a tempest and passes away as the remembrance of a guest that tarries but a day. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with Yahweh. The care of them is with the Most High. So when you practice righteousness, doors, there is a kingdom prepared for the righteous. Yahweh would be unfair if he said the ones that are practicing wickedness and those that are practicing righteousness, you will get that same kingdom. But he's fair and he's just. So there is a reward for those that press past this old corrupt flesh, your corrupt thoughts, there is a kingdom prepared for you. And there is a crown of beauty for those that walk in righteousness. If you're practicing wickedness, you're not going to get the same reward as those that practice righteousness. You care for the Most High because He cares for you. Wisdom 5 and 16. Therefore, Shall they receive a splendid kingdom and a beautiful crown from Yahweh's hand? For with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. Yah cares for those that practice righteousness. And there is a great reward for them that walk in truth. Can I tell you, those, when you're doing what is right, you know. When you're doing that which is evil, you know. So, I've been young and I'm old. I've seen the hand of Almighty Yah upon the wicked as well as upon the righteous. So you can't tell me that Yah is unjust. He's not unjust. And Yah is not a liar. Let man be a liar and woman be a liar, but Almighty Yah is true. When one cares, it, all, it will always provoke one to love each other and you'll know how to entreat each other because Yah knows. And if you walk in the way of truth, you will govern yourself all the time in truth. When you care for anyone, your commitment is to that one. So our commitment is to the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. We will do right by all men. We will do right by all women. But our commitment is unto my Almighty Yah and those that walk in truth. I want to go to Hebrews now. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. It said, But let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of Imuna, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water from Almighty Yah. Our confidence and our commitment and our pledge is unto Almighty Yah doing that which is righteous doings. Our strength coming from Almighty Yahweh. My strength today is coming from Almighty Yahweh. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He put the breath in me that when I got this morning, I couldn't do nothing but give him. Told I, for he is tongue unto me. This morning, I was able to honor him with my being. Can I tell you, when you truly care for someone, you don't, they don't have to tell you everything to do. 
My ish was leaving this morning, him and some of the Aki that were going to take care of some business for the community. He didn't ask for breakfast, but I knew he was going on a long journey. So my first thing I said, after I get my little walk in, I run over to the kitchen and I'll prepare him something. And I did. He didn't ask for it, but I know if he's going on a long journey, he might get a little hungry. So I prepared him something, I put it in a plastic container, and I set it on his desk. My ish cares much for me. There's no other man that can love me the way he has loved me. He's been honest with me, he walks in truth. And just that little gesture of love. I know he, he didn't have to say, tell me to it just the look of his eyes spoke God. And when you learn how to love, it's Yahshua HaMashiach love. That's how you'll be able to care for the body. Hallelujah. It says the pure and living water. Where does it come from? It comes from Almighty Yah. The pure and living water uh, come. let's go to Shorah 21 verse 13. It says, the knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood, and his counsel is like the pure fountain of the living water. This living water, once you drink of it, you will never thirst again. The living water is Yeshua Hamashiach. He came in the volume of the book. He fulfilled the Old Testament as well as the New. He is the book, the living truth. You can't have one without the other. It's called history. You know, when they tell history, they only want to tell it on the white man's side. You, want, you don't want to hear about the black man's side. But you can't have the white man's story without the black man's story. The black man did the bulk of the work. So without his history being told, the white man's history, there's no truth to it. You need to hear both sides of the story. Hallelujah. So, where the pure water flows from, let's go to Revelation 22 verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, bright as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of Almighty Yah and of the Lamb, Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahshua HaMashiach is the living water of truth. Hebrews 10 verse 23. It said, let us hold fast the profession of our Emmanuel without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Now if he's faithful, should we not be faithful? Is he trustworthy? Should we not be trustworthy? If he cares for us, should we not care for each other? Care brings about true love. Do you hear me? When you learn how to care, it brings about that pure love that can only come from all my love. Over these years, you know, I have, um, well, I had two sisters, two brothers. And growing up, I always cared for my sisters and my brothers. I would fight. Can I tell you, I fought in my home. I would fight my brothers. I didn't fight my sisters, but I would fight my brothers. But no one else could fight my brothers. Because if you would touch my brothers, I would come after you like a Tasmanian devil. And I didn't care what it took. I would hunt you down. The same thing with my sisters. So if I had that same effervescence for them, don't you think I would have it for the body, the daughters of Yahshua HaMashiach? So that's what Yah's looking for, a genuine care. And I had it for my biological sisters and brothers, and I can assure you that I have it for the people of Yah. I don't fight anymore, but I'll fight with the Ruah of Almighty Yahweh. It's saying, let us consider one another to provoke to love and to tell what. That's what provoke is, it's an action, it's a deed. You know, we as the daughters of design, we must be examples one to another every day. 
No, I'm not looking for you to be an example. I am that example. I look for it in the young daughters to pattern themselves after Yahshua HaMashiach. Because we must be examples unto each other. We must be strength to each other. For we're in an hour now where you cannot find daughters that want to live simple. You can't find daughters that want to dress Kodash and set apart. Yes, we are daughters. We should cover our bodies. We don't want every man gawking and looking at us. Our bodies are for our husbands, our ish. So if you don't have an ish, you cover yourself and you wait on Yah until he gives you a man of Yah to learn how to love you and to care for you. Exposing your body parts is not going to cause a man to love you. It'll show that you're cheap and anybody can have you. I don't want every man to want me, just the one that I have. So you cover yourself. If you're busty up here, you cover that. Your breast shouldn't be exposed for every man to see. Your buttocks shouldn't be for every man to see. Oh yes, I have big legs, but every man shouldn't see that. They're for my age. If you're shapely, cover yourself. Cover yourselves. Can I tell you, as it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be in this day. Every woman wants to show her wares. You have, no woman is praying because if you were truly praying, you would know that that's not the will of you. If you on your face, like you say, and studying eight hours a day, which we really don't have time for that, don't we? If you have a home and you're homeschooling your children, you're keeping your house clean, every woman should have a clean home. Every woman, no nasty woman is going into the kingdom. Why don't you have time to clean your house? We live in a community setting, but we do have time to clean the dining hall. We have time to clean the bed. We have time to clean our homes. We have time to work with our children. Yes, we do. We prepare meals. We even sit down and discuss the meals we're going to have. That's how we do it here. We strive to eat healthy. We talk about exercise for our body. We don't go run to the doctors for every little pain and every toothache. No. If you're eating right and you learn how to care for yourself, then you don't have to run to the doctor for every little ache and pain. When are you going to learn to trust Yah? When are you going to learn to wait on Yah? You can say you trust Yah, but if you run into the doctor every time you get a pain in your side, or you get a headache, where does the trust come in? You say, oh yeah, well the hands are on, on the doctors. How do you know? What doctor you know that's walking in truth? What? Now really, think about it. What doctor do you know that's walking in truth? I remember going to the doctor some years ago, and there was another doctor going in to have gallstones removed, and she was telling her doctor to make sure you drug me up. She said, now I don't want you on drugs, but make sure I'm drugged up. And I'm thinking, my, it scared me. So when are we going to learn to truly trust in you? You can say what you want about y'all has his hands on the doctor. If the man's not walking in truth, how can you say that? How can you say that? So, we must learn to truly trust in Yah. And if He cares for you, He'll show you certain herbs that you can eat to take care of you. So, over the years, I've learned to take better care of me, take care of my itch. Watch over the children. The children know I care for them. Because when something happens, the first place person they want to run to is Nani. Because they know Nani's going to judge the situation right. And if they fall and get hurt, Nani has a band-aid to put on. The sore, the scar, as you would call it, the boo-boo. Yes, they know that Nani cares. And they know that I don't favor one child over the other. So as we being the body of Yahshua HaMashiach, we must learn to have that same care. Hallelujah. And our trust must be in Almighty Yah. And we must encourage one the other. We must exalt each other in truth. And if, when we exalt each other, can I tell you, daughter, there will be strength in the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. Praise Yah. Care is protection for each other.
we protect, we oversee, you judge. You say, well, don't judge no man. Well, how, can I tell you, so the righteous is going to judge the earth, those that have done wickedly. Well, if we don't stop, if we're walking in righteousness, we ought to be able to judge the situation. You ought to be able to judge if a daughter's doing, two daughters come to you with a, a situation, you're not going to be able to judge that. You won't be able to say which one is right and which one is, did that which was evil. You must learn how to judge. So if you're walking in truth and in righteousness, you will be able to judge that situation. I want to go to Sharan, chapter 34, verse 12. It said, I have often been in danger of death, but have escaped because of the, these experiences that I've had with Yahweh. The Ruah of those who fear Yahweh will live. The spirit in you will live. For their tikva is in Almighty Yah who has saved them. He who fears Yahweh will not be timid, nor play the coward, for he is his tikva. So daughters cannot tell you there is no situation that will arise that you will be afraid or timid and not be able to judge. Yes, I am 65 years old and I've been walking this way for 40 plus years. And can I tell you, there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. And when situations arise here, I'm not afraid to judge it. You hear the matter out, sometimes you don't even have to hear the whole matter out. From experiences that you've had in this war, you will know how to judge it. And you will know how to tell the daughter, go and shalom. Can I tell you, I know who I am in Yeshua HaMashiach. And I have boldness in this walk. So I'm not afraid of anything that arises. I don't, I'm not easily shaken. I'm not. Because I know who my father is. And once you know who Almighty Yah is in your life, you can make a bold stand. Hallelujah. Way. I want to go to verse 15. It says, Blessed is my nephesh of man who fit blessed is the nephesh of the man who fears Almighty Yah. To whom does he look? And in who is his support and his strength? Almighty Yah is my strength. Almighty Yah is my support. And Almighty Yah is my strength. I can say that all day long. I can stand without a doubt knowing that He is my strength. Hallelujah. Wait, Torah Yah. Daughters of Tazayan, let Almighty Yah be your strength. Pray without ceasing. Sometimes when you feel you don't know what to do, Put, turn your plate down. You say, well, I can't fast all day. Well, just fast a meal. Just find yourself faithful in whatever you set out to do. And y'all will give you strength to go that extra mile. Hallelujah. The eyes of Yahweh are upon those who love him. A mighty protection. A strong support. A shelter from the hot wind, and a shade from noonday sun, a preservation from stumbling, and a defense against falling. Even when you stumble and fall, Lord, get up, pick yourself up. You're not the first one to have fallen. You won't be the last one, but pick yourself up. Go in the power and the strength of all my God. Don't let Hasatan still. He that stole, let him steal no more. Stand in the power of his Ruah. There is nothing you can't do in Yahshua HaMashiach. Reading this word will give you the strength you need. Can I tell you there are times that you hear women say, well, I read this and I read. Well, if that's what you read, then that's for you. You can share with the daughter, but whatever you read, when, if, when it comes to the Torah, is for your strength. Usually when I study, I go on what the messenger has preached on on the Shabbat or on midday 
And I go over those verses, and it's for my strength. It helps me to stand in my times of trials and tribulations. So I know who my trust is in. My trust is in Almighty God. He lifts up the nephesh, your soul, and gives light to the eyes. He grants healing, life, and blessing to those who put their trust in Him. For Yah gives the righteous strength and power to overcome every day. Yah knows what your plight is this day, and He gives you strength to overcome. He wants you to trust. He wants you to, to depend on Him. He wants you to cry out unto Him. My nephesh cries out unto Almighty Yah every day. He is my strength. I trust in no other. If you say I can't, then you can't. If you say I can't, then you can. Please. Let the light of your sure reign in your heart this day. Let him give you strength this day. I can do all things through Yahshua HaMashiach who gives me strength. Yahshua gives me strength. I am an overcomer every day. In my sicknesses, I have strength. In my pains, hallelujah, in my tribulations, I have strength. I take one day at a time. Those things I have no power over, I don't worry about it. Those things I cannot change, I'm not overwhelmed. I just say, Yah, let your will be done. And we must say it also. I care for the body, for those that are walking in righteousness. As Zakein Yeramiah preached on, on uh, yesterday on the Shabbat, he said, are there any strangers in Israel? Yael? We're sure there are. There are people that, there are even husbands and wives where the husband is saying and the wife is not. Or the wife is saying and the husband is not. But if they abide to live, with that individual, they still have to do right. The wife still has to obey the husband. She has to make sure she uh, keeps the house clean. She has to make sure that she obeys him, not in some things, but when she feels like it. She has to obey her ish in everything. Even if she chooses not to go into the kingdom, she still must do what is right. So there will be people who just dwell with the righteous but they're not chosen or they choose not to be righteous but they've got to do right so will they be handed a crown of righteousness no but you still got to do what's right can i tell you i have worked among the heathens on jobs and can i tell you i can be at shalom because i will tell you the truth I'm not going to joke with you. I don't want to hear your jokes. I just live righteously among saints. And that's what you must do, daughters. You don't have to act like the world because you're in the world. But you can tell them the truth. I, I didn't go to their parties. I worked in the school system. Yes, ma'am. And can, we, had, we had gatherings after school that I had to attend. But I didn't joke and jive with them. I would look with, at them with a serious face. I would let my yay be yay and my nay be nay. If I had to bring something, I would bring, I always brought um, different dishes for the occasion, but I didn't act foolish. I talked serious. I worked with the teachers. Whatever the principal asked me to do, I would do. Do you hear me? Whatever the principal asked me to do, I would do. And I was under three principals within uh, I said five years span, and they all knew that Miss Roberts was serious. They all knew that Miss Roberts did not play. But whatever you ask her to do, she would do it with all her heart. And that's how I am with Almighty God. I didn't do it because of them. I did it because I did it as unto Almighty God. Everything we do, we must do it as unto Almighty God. I don't do it for accolades. I don't do it for a pat on the back. I do it because I want to be pleasing before Almighty God. 
it is he that has saved me. My husband did not save me. My mother did not save me. But the creator that created me saved me for his being. Yah picks those that he knows is going to do right by him. He wants the people that are going to love him. He wants the people that will not be ashamed of him. He don't want daughters that are committing order. He don't want daughters that can't speak the truth. Did you all hear me? No liar should tear it before Almighty Yah. He's going to say, depart from me because I know you not. He said, I'd rather deal with the whoremonger than to deal with the liar. He don't want daughters that say, well, that's too hard. I don't like cleaning. I take great delight in cleaning. I take great delight in keeping my home immaculate, everything in order. Because I want my husband to say, I like that. What sin is that in the house? Yes, I'm a lover of perfumes. I like to smell sweet for my age. No, I'm not going to tell you how many bottles of perfume I have. But I like to smell sweet for my man. Don't come telling me who made this and who made that. When you go to Costco, you don't know who made what. They're not righteous men that prepare your food in Costco. They're not righteous men and women that prepare your food in Walmart and in Sam's. So stop with the bull crap, okay? All right. This is Ima Raphael at Teshua Community in the Bay, speaking to the daughters of Tazan. Can I tell you, you haven't been walking this way long. How can you tell me what's right to do? You know, I hate to meet daughters like that. They haven't been walking this way but a few years, and they struggle in the few years that they walk this way. And they know more about Yahshua HaMashiach than he knows about himself. It's better when you come to this truth, daughters, to Shema, to listen, to govern your Ru'ah, to study to be quiet. Did you hear me? Study to be quiet. Don't show me the scripture you read because it's for you. Can I say it again? The, study, the scripture that you read is for you. Study to be quiet. Learn to mind your own business. Work willingly with your hands. I strive every day to be an example to uh, that other daughters can see. The daughters here can tell you that Ima Raphael, she takes great delight in preparing the meals here. I take great delight in picking up the tour to share with the daughters here. I don't escape doing that which is righteous. Let me repeat that. I don't escape in doing that which is righteous. I want to please Almighty God in my daily living. I want the daughters to see that in my life. I want when they see me, they see a brightness about me. Not darkness, not sneaking about, seeing what evil and devious things I can do. Not in other men's matters or daughter's matters, but minding my own business. I'm not trying to overhear what another sister is talking about. It's not my business. It's not my business. But I mind my own business. Did you hear me? We must learn to mind our own business. If you're working, cleaning your home, you don't have time for all of that. You don't. So study to work willingly with your hands. Every daughter should, yes, I said I'm not going to say it. You're just going to have to admit, daughters, that you're lazy. Even if you don't do that, but make potholes. Study to work with your own hands. Learn how to sew. Make toppers for your house. Make potholes. You just, have, you just don't want to say you're lazy. Well, you are lazy. Can I tell you, when, one time Ray up told me I was lazy because I didn't know how to can. Well, can I tell you, I got me a book from Walmart and I learned how to can. And there was a sister that was at the assembly at that time. I would ask her different things about canning. Can I tell you, he couldn't stop me after that. I would go buy fresh meat I would call food lot and ask them what they had for that day. And I would go and purchase that meat and I would can meat. I would make jellies, whatever. I just got so caught up in it that I took a great love for it. So you never know what you can do because you won't make that first step. So you have to really deal with you and say, you are lazy. 
Your man can tell you all day you're sweet and you, you, you got honey dripping out the side of your mouth. Well, that's not so. Can I tell you, let no evil communication come out your mouth. You shouldn't speak vile. You should clean up, clean up your conversation. You shouldn't talk like you're ish. Clean up your conversation. Let the pure rivers of water flow out of your mouth. Let the love and the kindness and the pure thoughts of Almighty Yahweh, let it flow from your mouth. Speak the Torah truth. Not to someone else, but to you. Speak the Torah truth to you. That it may make you free. Hallelujah. Let me just read this scripture once, once more. Shirak 34 and 17. It says, He lifts up the nephesh and gives light to the eyes. He grants healing, life, and blessings to those that walk upright. So when you learn how to care, as Almighty Yah has cared for us, you know how I know He cares for us? Because He gave us His very, very best. He went into His treasure chest and He selected the best jewel, Yoshua Hamashiach. To come into place to die for us. Because can I tell you, Lord, for all the wickedness that I have done, I couldn't die for me. But Yahshua can. And he did. Hallelujah. To those that care, we want our care to be seen in the sight of Almighty God. And to those we care for. So as Yah cares for the body, we should care that very same way. You know, daughters, we have children here, and they can truly say that Nani cares for them because I look out for all of them. Not some, all. I take great delight in, in assisting every Akeem that's here when his wife brings forth children. I am here to assist. Yes, even in being crippled, and with aches and pains, I am there to make sure that that child comes forth in due season. I'm there to assist, to help any way that I can. And that's what righteous daughters do. Can I tell you, and I train my other daughters to think that way, to assist that way, because I'm not gonna always be here. I don't know when my time is, but I want to be ready and I want to have other daughters that are ready to assess the body. Hallelujah. So I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. It says, Wherefore, though I wrote to you, I did it not for Titus' cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you is in the sight of Yahweh that I might appear to be evident to you. So we want Yahweh to be evident in our lives. When you care for the body, you care for Almighty Yah. Notice when I first came into the knowledge of truth, learning how to pay my tithes and offerings, there was nothing that I wouldn't give. Even sometimes I would let a bill, if I wanted to give a, a larger offering, I would let a bill go past. I just wouldn't pay it because I want to give unto Almighty Yah. And in my giving, Yah blessed my understanding of this truth, my faithfulness in my giving. And where I've seen that he would give even the more. I didn't care about the lights being turned on. You know what? I used to start buying lanterns for my home. And I would like the lantern if my lights were turned off. You know, as I sometimes I speak with my younger brother, he's about 62 now, and I we talk at least twice to three times a week. And he was saying how we were poor when we were growing up. And I began to think, and I said, Yeah, we weren't poor. Can I tell you what we weren't poor? poor? We could bathe every day. We had lunch money, and there was only one taking care of us, and it was our mother. The milkman came on Monday, 
Baltimore, I think it was called Baltimore Milk Truck back then. We got orange juice, milk, bacon, and eggs from the milkman on Monday. I got new shoes when I needed new shoes. I got new shoes even if I wanted new shoes. We wore new clothing all the time. So I look back, we weren't poor. There were times I went to the store, I know at least two to three times a week, from the allowance that I got. My uncle was a truck driver, so I got my allowance on Monday when he would come to visit. My uncle called me Granny, because when I did my house cleaning, I would put my mother's house robe on, and I would clean with that on, and when he would come by, he would say, Granny, how you doing today? And the house would be clean, it would smell nice, and I would get my allowance from my uncle. So I can't truly say we were poor. I can say we had much. Because we never lacked anything. We had breakfast, we had lunch, we had dinner. So I can't say we were poor. I can say we had much. So I told y'all for the much we had. And can I tell you my mother, she worked hard. Can I tell you why she worked hard? Because she loved her children. And she cared much for her children. And she would always say that these are my children. So the way she left that with me, I can leave that with you. As Yah has cared much for us, we must care much for the body. And yes, growing up, we had much. And Yah sure how much you should have much. Yah cares for the righteous. So when you're striving to do that which is right, do it. You will never go lacking. Sometimes you have to stop back and take an inventory of yourself. Am I doing what's right before Almighty God? Sometimes you will be afflicted with sickness. It gives you time to think and to ponder. Am I doing that which is righteous before Almighty God? Have I done something evil? When you've done evil, you know. When you're not walking righteousness, in righteousness, you know. Your thoughts should be the thoughts of Almighty God. Govern yourself. Cast down those evil thoughts. Cast down your evil ways. There is nothing tough about you. There is nothing tough about me. Yah's coming out looking for a righteous bride. So you cast off your evil works. You walk in righteousness. You seek Almighty Yah with a pure for Yah cares for you, you must care for Him. And in your care, you will care for the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. I told Yah, for all that He's done for me, for this place that I'm in, you'll say, well, it's not fancy. I don't want to live like the world. I don't want to have the riches as the world. I don't want to have a pink Cadillac, even though I don't like pink Cad Cadillacs. I like a Hummer. And if I had one, it would be yellow. Hallelujah. But I want my righteousness to be seen by all. I don't want a pat on the back. I just want to do it as unto Almighty God. I want to be an example that all can see. So whatever I lay my hands to, I do it as unto Almighty God. Yah cares for those who do righteous. There is a righteous crown for those that do righteous. And there is a kingdom that is prepared for the righteous. And there shall be a place for the wicked. For Yah is not unjust. I told Yah for all that he has done for us this day. Daughters, I know that sometimes I don't give. I would like to speak at least twice a month. But at this time I'm working in the school. I cook in the dining hall. I prepare special meals for my lunch. There are things I do to assist with the community. So I'm kind of stretched out a bit. But I have to make time to bring a word and encouragement to you, daughters. And I will press even more. We're a short one, sister, because she's not well in her body. So I have to take on her chores. And like I said, I'm not young, I'm old. But I still have to press. And I shall press even the more to do what I can 
to come forth to bring you a word of encouragement. For in this time, we need a word that your daughters will be able to press on as never before. We're in and out where it's very evil. There are not many, even though people say they love Yah, you can look in their lives and tell that they do not. You know when one loves Yah because they care for you. They care for you. So we're in an hour where we must press as never before. I shall press. I can't say I will be back again this month, but I will press. I will press. Working in the school sometimes, it takes its toll. But I told him, y'all, because he gives me strength every day to do that which I need to do. So we told him, y'all, for all things, and we do I hover y'all much because he first I hover me. Let us strive to do what's right. Let us learn how to care. There is another part. Rayak has already told me there's a part two for the word care and caring. Because when you care, you will forsake you to help your sister. Be a hope. Hallelujah. So Yahweh Baruch you all. Be encouraged. Press on. Remember, it's not what someone is doing to you. It's your thoughts. Your thoughts, not mine. Cast down your evil thoughts and do that which is righteous. Learn to love righteousness and walk therein this day and forevermore in your sure Hamashiach. Greetings to you all. I holler you all in your sure Hamashiach. Again, we're in Teshua community. Have an excellent, excellent Yah in your sure Hamashiach. Yahweh will you all. Hallelujah.